How do I look? Yeah. Right? Sweet. Well, listen, I guess if anybody maybe thought uh, your debut was a fluke or something like that, I mean, do you feel like you proved to the world, like, I'm the real deal? I'm the real deal. Like I said out there, you know, two of the most grappling heavy guys and probably the two of the best grapplers in the division, and I passed the test. And uh, I just found out, you know, he had 20 pounds on me tonight. He weighed 165. I came in at 145. That catch weight had nothing to do with me. That was me being nice, taking a fight when a guy was way above, you know, I'm coming up a weight class and he's obviously a 45er. And, uh, you know, I went into the world where that matters most. And uh, my performance speaks for itself. So did you find that out from the staff tonight after the fight? Or? Yeah, yeah, I just found out. He weighed 165 uh, coming in there. So do you feel like in some ways, like, what the hell did I agree to that for? Uh, no, I, I said all week, if he's got, if he comes in 20 pounds overweight, you know, uh, let's bang, dude. I'm, I'm fighting, you know. I'm going to come in there and I'm going to fight regardless of what you weigh. You know, I, uh, I train, train with guys that are big. You know, I was prepared for him to be big. Maybe not as big, you know, especially planning on him making weight. But even if he didn't, you know, if he was 150 pounds at weigh-ins, you know, I, I'm here to fight. That's what I do. You know, I fight people and I love to put on a show. Uh, you know, like I said in the interview, give me somebody that wants to stand up and bang with me. Let me bang. <laughs> How did you feel about your performance overall? I mean, obviously, you knew it was a tough guy. Dude. It was a tough guy, you know. Uh, I was <laughs> the judo toss at the beginning. That's where I started. It's been a while since I tossed somebody, so that was uh, that was for uh, the heart right there. But you know, uh, I like to put on super exciting performances, and uh, you know, I felt like that was a, a great grappling performance. I got locked down a couple different places that I just couldn't get out of uh, in the third round. You know, I uh, may have been able to explode a little bit to get out uh, more, but that, that's what he was looking for. You know, he was looking for me to make a mistake, grab my neck, grab my arm. And, you know, I felt like I won the first two rounds. So, you know, I was playing it extra safe there on the bottom on getting up. You know, I didn't want to make some dumb mistake and get caught in a submission. For those who don't know, take us through the process of how they ended up changing this to a catch weight. Like, when did you find out? How uh, I got a call about 1 a.m. the night before weigh-in saying really? that he was 143 pounds and dead to the world, that they were cutting him off. Uh, at 140 pounds, if he, you know, he said he would make that, and uh, you know that was the, basically the agreement. You know, you make 140. I was already 137, right about ready to go to sleep and wake up and make weight like a professional. Uh, but you know, I was like, dude, whatever. Let's you know, show up, take the fight. Let's let's fight. That's what I came here to do. You know, what's what's five pounds? What's ten pounds? I guess what's 20 pounds? You know. Uh, I'm here to fight. I'm here to put on a show, and it doesn't matter, you know, what the circumstances are. I'm gonna, I'm gonna come out, and I'm gonna try to kick your ass. How close do you think you were to getting that submission uh, in that second round? Uh, man, it was tight. I was holding on for dear life for that. You know, I didn't have the best position, but my arm was underneath, and I was squeezing, and uh, he started reacting like it was tight, you know, and I know it was tight. Going back hey, to the weight. Fun about giving you guys first oh yeah, you know, I consider myself 14 and 0 now, 15 and 0. You know, I had uh, the two ones on my record. You guys probably watched on the Contender Series. You know, Dana met me at the cage and was like, I'm sorry, dude, you won that fight. So my one loss on my record, uh, you know, I don't really consider it a loss, you know. Uh, you know, But it is what it is. So uh, any chance I can steal somebody zero, I'm going to since, uh, you know, I kind of got mine taken from me. How do you feel about the Contender Series? You know, a lot of guys used to come off of and now Contender Series is like, Oh, man, I'm a contender series OG. I was on the first season, you know, uh, with uh, O'Malley, you know, and now I got as many fights as, uh, you know, him in the in the UFC, you know. Uh, I, I had to, didn't get signed on, you know, I think I'm the only guy to fight twice on the contender series and not get signed. And, uh, you know, I went and I, I won two more world titles in, what, four or five fights. Uh, last one being, you know, the LFA's only champ champ. Like, I am the real deal. Give me big fights, big cards. I'm here to stay. Going back to the weight one more time. Mm -hmm. You could have gotten 20% of his purse. Did the money ever come into play did, with you or your team? Uh, you know, we'll, uh, let's just say I'm going to get paid. There were some arrangements made? There were some arrangements made. We, we, he wasn't going out uh, on that one, uh, you know, without any, any uh, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Penalty, any penalty, yeah, any consequences, right? Let me ask you a question, you touched on you said, you said you just let me bang, bro, right? But you just said it right there. I mean, with the wins that you have right now, right. I mean, there's a shot that you can face some guys pretty high up in the division. So, are you you want a stylistic fun matchup, or would you rather have somebody with a with a little number next to their name? Ah, uh, you know, uh, either one. You know, I'm here to put on. I'm here for the long haul, and I'm here to. Uh, 
be the best in one of the hottest weight classes in the UFC right now. You know, Bantamweight is one of the up and coming hot divisions. And, you know, I took out two prospects. You know, like I said, I felt like I should have been signed to the UFC two years ago. But now here we are, new weight class. You know, I came in off a highlight reel knockout and a five day notice against Ray Borg. And, you know, he's no joke at 35 either. You know, he beat a, another undefeated uh, Eric Silva's brother, another tough prospect, a black belt. So, you know, I faced two of the tough, toughest grapplers in the division. Why not give me one of the best uh, strikers out there and see how he hangs? Because, uh, you know, uh, some of the best strikers in the world have tried it with me too, and they end up, uh, you know, unconscious on the ground. Do you think that long journey to the UFC was beneficial for you? Rather oh, than yeah. I mean, you know, everything happens for a reason. I was a little uh, upset uh, that night on the Contender Series, but, you know, I licked my wounds. I got better. I moved up a whole nother weight class. I came in with a bang LFA's first champ champ highlight reel knockout. If you guys didn't catch that, check that out. Uh, you know, five day notice against Borg with a gash over my eye and a torn MCL. Like, uh, you know, I came in with a bang and I just made another statement tonight on one of the biggest cards of the year uh, against undefeated prospect. You know, I, I'm doing what I'm supposed to do. You know, I feel like, uh, you know, I, I talk to you guys well too. You know, I got a great personality. Build me up, Dana. I'm here to take over your bantamweight division. Any thought of ever going to 25 with that offer? If the UFC came to you and said, hey, we want to build this division a little bit more? Because like you said, you were a champ in LFA at flyweight as well. Right, yeah. You know, uh, multiple time champ at flyweight. Tachi Palace, LFA, you know, uh, uh, I could I could fight at flyweight. I think bantamweight is my new home. I'm trying to get bigger, you know, trying to let my body grow into that bantamweight division. Uh, I didn't pack up, you know, I was sitting about, you know, 53, 54 all camp, which was the heaviest I've ever been, uh, you know, trying to pack on food, pack on weight. And then, uh, you know, I kind of didn't feel the best uh, after this uh, weigh-in, you know, not, not a bad weight cut or anything, just I didn't have my appetite. I was trying to force myself to eat, so I was only 145 pounds tonight. You know, uh, probably 40 after that fight, you know what I mean? Like, uh, you know, I'm trying to get bigger, but if if the right opportunity, the right dollar sign presents itself for flyweight, uh, so be it. But right now, Bantamweight is hot, and I want to be one of the best in one of the best divisions in the UFC, not a division that's just hanging on by a thread. You mentioned LFA a few times now. For those, and we're seeing a big influx of LFA fighters right. in the UFC. For those most familiar with the approach, just how legit the top LFA fighters uh, I mean, man, you know, like LFA speaks for itself. You know, uh, all the champions that, you know, I could go on and on and on. Brian Ortega, Anthony Smith, uh, you know, Ricky Simone, myself. Uh, shoot, I, there's a ton of them, you know. I, yeah, there's a ton. There's like eight guys from the LFA on this card tonight, you know. Uh, it is, without a doubt, one of the biggest feeders into the UFC. And, you know, I'm their only champ champ, you know. Uh, so, uh, it, you know, it's it's the one of the best divisions to, to come in through. And, you know, those guys are killers in there. Everybody's fighting for this spot here. So, you know, they bring it. And, uh, you know, I, I conquered uh, all, the, all the tests there, all the tests in the UFC so far, all the tests on the Contender Series. Give me a test I can't pass.